Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Old World. We are pretty well on our way with the Persians to setting up for the mid-game. Uh, having four cities at the moment, we have four ambitions up and running. We have an heir, which is 12. Look at him, he's, he's growing up so strong. Uh, we are actually tutoring him as well, and what I forgot to mention in the previous episode is that because we now have someone as part of the clergy, the Kohen over here, uh, we actually got a huge boost to our science production because as you can see, uh, this particular character has 7 wisdom, and because of that she is giving us a total of 8.5 um, science per year as a result of that and considering we have 22 total 8.5 is a huge 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 boost to that so this is why having people as part of your court is always useful um basically they will give you bonuses depending on their strengths but specifically because we didn't really have anyone who was very wise so far this was a very nice welcome addition to our court now what we really really want is someone who has a lot of discipline or a lot of charisma because that will help us get either civics or it's just some gold flowing in. Uh, our leader itself does have two charisma as well, so we do get some civics from that. Uh, and we're doing fairly well, I think, on civics with 28 per turn so far. But as I said, uh, more is always better, so there's really no, yeah, nothing to, to lose from getting some more. Now, we are, of course, tutoring our uh, future leader which is definitely going to have better stats than our current leader because, like you can see, it only has a total of five stats. Uh, you typically want these individual stats to be higher rather than having a little bit of everything because the you do get increasing bonuses as this gets higher. So it's not a linear scaling, but it's, it's well, not exactly exponential, but it's, it's a little bit more than linear at least. So going from two to three courage, for example, would give you a higher bonus. Okay, we can actually see it over here. So... Um, take a look at the top. So as a governor, this will give you 12% bonus to uh, training. And with 3, you get a 20% bonus. So that's a little bit more than 3 times 6. Uh, which would be like linear scaling if this would be 6% per level. If you get what I mean. So higher stat is better than a slightly lower stat. Um, that said, we don't have any influence about the tutoring and it's highly likely to get, to be courage because we are being tutored over here with uh, by a shield bearer which is well, courageous but doesn't know much else. Um, so there's a pretty high chance that our prince will turn out to be a, quite a strong military leader. Not ideal necessarily from what I'm trying to do right here. But there's not really anything we can do about that at this point. What we can make sure is that we get some more um, room to expand. So we are going to take out these Danes over here in the corner. We are going to proceed with the war preparations. Make them very, very angry. angry. And now I have no idea why we just shifted over here. But we are going to go and attack them. Now we have a ranged unit over here and a melee unit over there. Let's see, can we actually reach? Yes, we can. There we go. And let's attack. Can we take them out? Yes, we can. That's very nice. And, and there we go. The first round of war is fought. <laughs> well, uh, I was just saying that we needed a character with a high charisma and or high discipline in order to kind of round out our court. And now we got this event. So... Oligarch Khosrau the Deceitful heard a strange rumor, so he found a merchant with unending amounts of money. Now apparently she thinks it's just about her very good trading, um, but yeah, we uh, get the uh, option to add Artakama to our court as a, um, what are we calling this, uh, as a court merchant, and she has a pretty decent set of stats so she has three charisma and four discipline um, again i don't really see that a, a reason not to add her to the court unless it would be completely useless in that case we could add some additional experience to our own leader uh, but i think this is definitely going to be worth it and yeah there we go welcome we also have this pop-up event so we have a band of jewel speakers from rome um, that's a very good thing. So apparently the uh, Jewish religion is spreading to Rome as well. And they want to join our city apparently. So we can uh, send some supplies. We could afford this and make Rome really happy. Um, we could spend some training to gain some gold. 
we can say no. Mm. Or we can make everyone unhappy. <laughs> well, this this definitely doesn't seem the, like the way to go. Um, let's see about our relationship with Rome. Do we really care about that? Um, well, we don't not care about it, I suppose. Do we need the gold? No, we don't really at the moment either. So let's just... This is fairly neutral, I suppose. But we can take the opinion boost um, for a very cheap price. Well, I'm not sure if cheap is the correct word, but it's, uh, it's affordable. Let's put it like that. Let's do some more shooting over here. And let's take out these units one by one. So we are cleaning up quite nicely. Are they still alive? Oh, they have one hit point left. Well, that's uh, that's a little annoying. I w I am, I'm not going to lie. We have these barbarians attacking these workers here all the time as well. But I think they should be able to complete this before they get killed. Taking a little bit of a risk over there. But uh, these ones seem to leave us alone. So it's just these uh, archers shooting at our workers. Um, yeah, I'm just going to queue up some uh, exploration and I do want to start working on our ambitions as well. So we should be able to produ produce quite a few mines. We ha are producing a couple of them over here. Um, there's going to be a mine over here as well once these workers are complete um, and we can build some more mines. So this, this should be fairly trivial. I do want to make sure we have all the shrines up and running as well. That will take care of that. And those shrines will actually help us with developing our cities in turn as well. Um, now, five developing cities is going to take quite a while. And the six connected cities is in that regard a little easier, but that can be these two cities. We already have four connected. So as long as we make sure that we connect these two up as well, we should be good to go from that perspective. Oh, and before I forget, just to point out how strong having these people in your court is, even with three charisma, we all are already gaining... Uh, 2.6 civics per turn. It's not that much, but it's it's significant, and we can always use these people as governors as well. And let's see, as a courtier, these with four discipline, she's actually generating 37 gold per turn. That's quite a lot. It's actually the difference between uh, running a deficit and gaining 23 per turn. So, yeah, definitely worth it. But well, the good news is we have another convert to Judaism, but apparently we have an event as well because of the two trains. So let's see. He is constantly fighting and wrestling with the children of the palace servants. It's time for him to harness all that extra energy and direct it towards productive ends. Um, she will train him in the art of combat. What style of fighting should she emphasize? Um, so we can make him tough, which will make him a pretty good leader and actually boost all our units with five percent if they are damaged which is like most of the time during the war um that's pretty good or we can make him vigilant and that would mean a more city defense 20 percent city defense actually to all our cities um but honestly if your cities are under attack you're probably going to be doing some fighting so all in all i think this is the better trait to have now because this tutoring mission ended we are once again going to have him tutored, if we can. Yes, we can. And we are now going to have him tutored by Artakama. And she should be able to... Yeah, she has a lot of, uh, bigger chance to imp give him some discipline or charisma bonuses. So to kind of round him out. Now, I, I, I know that kind of goes against what I was just saying to try to stack certain abilities. But I do want to make sure... Basically, he gets anything but courage because we don't really care about that for the short term. I, I want to focus a little bit more on economy, which basically any of the other three stats would benefit more from than being courageous. So let's go for this. And Artakama is now tutoring him. You can see that by the star sign here as well. So there's a, a lot of these little indicators on the, uh, the, on, the, on the UI basically to really tell you what you're doing with whom. Uh, we could actually use our leader as well to influence someone if we have someone who's just uh, near a threshold. So, for example, the Mirinid family is just below 200. So, we can influence their leader, which is this one over here. We can influence him. This will take 200 gold. But that will um, make them like us a little bit more. Adverse. Generally, that's going to be the result. And pushing them above 200 will basically give us more bonuses from um, their opinion. 
Now let's see anyone else that we need to worry about for the moment because we could actually send our wife to intercede on our behalf as well. Um, but no, I don't think we have anything pressing to do from that regard. Now we are going to have to do some fighting as well. So let's make sure we take these out. That's a lot of experience from taking them out. And let's start attacking the town over here as well. So we can take it out, occupy it, and then we should be able to expand it. We almost have a worker ready here as well and a stone cutter over there. Then we can start working on a settler. Okay, so this is a very nice opportunity to kind of show you how the economics in this game work. So we just got a peace request from the Hattie, which are basically saying, hey, if you sell us some iron, then we're going to be your friends and we'll, we'll love you forever because that 40 opinion is permanent. Um, we'll have peace, so they're much, much less likely to attack us. But it is going to cost 110 iron that we currently don't have. But the way this game works is you can actually buy and sell the resources. So although we don't have the iron, we can actually say, well, we can sell some of this. So let's say we sell a few hundred of this. And then we can buy uh, just enough of this iron to actually get this going. And now we can actually pick this option. So you're not stuck with a stockpile of resources that you don't need. Um... You are a little bit dependent on the buying and selling rates, of course. So this will go up and down depending on what people produce. So elsewhere in the world, how much you buy and sell yourself. Um, but it gives you a lot of flexibility to get things going. And similarly over here, we now have an event with Prince Smyrdas. Um, he is basically asking us for money. And in, if we do that, he will become a herbalist, carpenter or educated. All of which are pretty good bonuses. If we say no. We actually still get a bonus. Uh, he's going to be frugal. And that means he is going to reduce our improvement cost. So this is a, a cheap option. Although not necessarily one I prefer. Although a lower cost in improvements does add up. So it's not, not a bad thing to have. Uh, but I kind of like the other options over here. Now in order to get this we would actually need 480 gold. Which we now don't have. But again we can just sell some of our surplus food. Uh, let's not sell too much though. There we go. And now we can send the money as requested. Uh, let's see, more events. We have a lot of events this turn. So the warriors led by the oligarch have proved themselves loyal and fierce fighters. Elite warriors who bring fear to their enemies. And we ask you to grant them the honor of being named immortals. Let's see, what will that do? Um, they will actually heal one HP per year. Or gain 80 experience. Well, actually, <laughs> this is a very good bonus to have. And uh, you can actually upgrade your uh, your early units in this game as well. So this this will stick with them forever if we keep them alive. This is a very worthwhile bonus. And we have a dreamy gaze. When while spending some of the quality time with Parmida, you certainly realize that she's staring at you with a dreamy expression. <laughs> Cyrus, she eventually says, "I'm entranced by your beauty. I love you." Say that you feel the same. Uh, so we can either take on a lover. Or say I am more than just a pretty face. Don't objectify me. Uh, who is she anyway? Is she a leader or of, of someone of some kind? I don't believe she is. Uh, she's in the family. <laughs> she's actually the spouse of one of our family heads. Uh, this seems like a something that can only go wrong. So we can let her fall out of love with us. And gain some discipline instead. Um, yeah, sounds good. Uh, although I am very pretty, yes indeed. Just as a little side note, I am... I do think we're doing pretty well, but we still have the competition cut out for us. Because Cartage over here is definitely expanding quite aggressively. And I, I still don't think they took this side list. I can't tell from any borders over here. They have plenty of more room to expand as well. And Assyria over here is actually doing the same thing. You can see they have each uh, four cities. And they are actually expanding south quite quickly as well. That might mean, though, that they will get into some wars with each other, which could be good for us. Uh, and potentially wipe out Hattie over here, which might not be good for us, but we'll see. Um, and in the meanwhile, Rome down here, and they're probably going to take this side as well. 
and they are doing fairly well as well. So we are not doing bad, but we still are far from having won the game at this point. Okay, so more interesting decisions coming up in terms of research. So drama, which the game is recommending to us, could be very useful because it gives us access to Odeon. And fun fact, it actually starts the music in the game. Now, I have been cheating a little bit because doing a Let's Play without any music in the background I think is really boring. So I am kind of putting in the music myself. Um, but the game is actually to, uh, supposed to only start the music once you research this. So I think that's a nice little touch. The main reason to pick this would be the Odeon, which is a pretty hefty amount of culture. And that would really help us get those um, developing cities going that we need for our ambition. However... Uh, I think the stone boost and food boost, or at least one of those, is too good to pass up. Now, since we are producing so much food already, I'm going to go for the stone boost. It's only going to take two turns, and I think the 200 of that is worth it. I mean, that's 20 turns worth of production uh, right now for us. Uh, no, actually, 40 turns. I can't do math. But anyway, you get the point. It's a lot, so we are going to take it, and if we don't take it, it will be gone forever. Now another nice thing that I haven't really showcased yet is that you can actually cut down trees. So as you can see I'm now running low on wood and I don't have any means of actively producing wood at the moment. But what we can do is just move into a forest and cut down these trees. Now as you can see they will actually go grow back. So unlike for example civilization in which you cut down trees and consume the forest in order to give yourself a production boost it's kind of a one-time use if you do that uh, in this case game you can actually run around cut down trees you can actually do it several times per turn as well uh, and now we have decent stockpiles which should allow us to build a couple more buildings as a result of that I'm also going to be building some more military units. So we can build the chariots over here because we have this rider city and we are now producing a slinger over here as well. Now we don't necessarily have a goal for these military units, but if you only start producing a larger military after you need it, uh, then you're going to be in problem, uh, in a lot of trouble. We, we have these Romans kind of going up and down our border all the time. We have Carthage really close as well. So I just want to make sure that these, these other nations won't think about like attacking us just because they can. We've also unlocked the ability to have a Chancellor in place to increase our growth, civics, training or money. Uh, depending, of course, if we have a good candidate for this. So let's check this out. So we have one candidate that already has a job. So the Ardukar is currently uh, in charge of what? One of our armies, I suppose. Uh, well, the Immortals, actually. Um, he would not be a bad candidate at all in terms of the civics production. Plus 10 is a lot. It would actually cost us growth and money. Um, but yeah, this is, this is not the ideal candidate, I suppose, although he, he's not too bad either. Um, Mandana the Deceitful, however, is really horrible. I don't think there's any way around that. Uh, she will cost us money, cost us growth, and only get us training, which we don't really need. So if anything, the Oligarch would be a pretty decent choice. Um, however, that would also require us to reinstate a new general to our army which we are using at the moment and he is a pretty good general as well um and we don't have a in, an immediate use for the civics at this moment we will have plenty of uses for that later uh, but i think it's worth just waiting to see if we get a better better candidate later on and there we go our first city reached the developing culture event so basically whenever your uh, city reaches a, um, a culture threshold the borders will expand and some events might trigger in this case parsa wants to have a poetry contest and they want us to participate now we can either um, be courageous and get a bonus from that and in tens we can do it anonymously which will become uh, make us become more wise or we can be the judge and then we will get more charisma now because we already have two charisma uh, we have other characters more focused on wisdom. I think we'll just go for this and get some more civics production going. And there we go. So just uh, taking a quick look at Parse, as you can see, we have quite a huge amount of borders going here now. And uh, did I just move this unit? Yes, I did. That was not what I wanted to do. There we go. Um, and we, oh boy, we have the... Uh, 
Barbarians over here pillaging our shrine. That's not a good thing. And we are now also not controlling that shrine anymore. So that's another bad thing. So we are basically going to have to redirect our army towards those barbarians. Which we can easily do if we just take these out over here. Let's see. There we go. And we have a Danish chief captive. We can send them away in change, uh, chains and get some legitimacy. We can get even more charisma. Uh, spare the boy, kill the father, or raise the boy as our own. Um, yeah, that seems like a very bad idea, but we could just spare the boy at least. Um, how badly do we want this bonus? This this seems like like a like a bad setup for future events as well. Um, let's go for the legitimacy. I mean, that's a pretty good choice as well. And it seems kind of like the safer option in this case. We are going to move this back over here and heal. And then this unit is going to go into the direction of these barbarians. Because they are starting to become really, really annoying. Um, anything else we need to do? We do need to set some production over here as well. Um, let's see. What should we do with this one? I kind of want to start developing this a bit more. Because that will spread the borders over here. And that's just really convenient. So we can place some more farms around these pastures. They do get bonuses from this. So this is just our... Our food food hub over here, basically. Um, yeah, that seems like a pretty good choice. And then we have some more workers to figure out, but I won't bore you with that. Oh man, our little boy is really growing up to be a general, it seems. Because even though we are training him with a merchant, he's still becoming more and more courageous. So that's an interesting development, but they, it'll, it'll just have to work for us, I suppose. And we completed our research into the stone boost, so we now have plenty of stone, and now the time has come to make another very hard charge. So we can either go for the free chariot, this will, won't come back if we don't pick it, uh, but we don't really have any use for a chariot at the moment. Of course we can take care of some barbarians and stuff like that, uh, but we have some, some, some uh, uh, units in production, that's what I wanted to say. Um, doctrine is way too expensive at this point, so let's check the, out the other two. So we can... Go for Polis, which is really good because it will allow us to build Hamlets, which are basically money-producing parts for your city. and don't really do anything else, um, but you do need to expand your city with these, these type of buildings, simply because as your city grows, it will become unhappy if you don't. Um, and this will basically turn into a lot of gold in the long run. So this is pretty good to take early. At the same time, Oyuns, uh, like we said before, are definitely useful as well and because we have this developing city thing i'm i basically want both of these pretty soon but i'm going to prioritize drama just to make sure i can get the culture going in my cities now from this point on i'm just going to show you the most important of these events popping up because typically there is like maybe one or two or three popping up every turn uh sometimes there's a couple of turns but without any of course uh, but it's really a nice way for the game to kind of help you keep track of what's going on in the world. Uh, and they are, there are very nice bonuses. So, for example, now our son turned 18, which means we get a couple of these events popping up. We can either give him some more discipline, or we can say, well, you can become a judge. And it will actually give him a huge chunk of stats. So I think in this case, this is the obvious uh, better choice. If we would have been a little bit more wise ourselves, we could have given him charisma as well. But again, just one charisma or one discipline versus two of each. So I'm not entirely sure what the balance is between these options, but this seems the obvious best choice in this case. There's no negative I can tell about this, so this is what we're going for. However, then you might get a second pop-up because he completed his studies, and that allows him to specialize into a certain direction as well. So in this case, we can either uh, have him become a tactician, which will take away his um, charisma but make him more wise instead it's actually a pretty good option compared uh, considering what we're trying to go for or we can kind of specialize him into a whole military approach which will give him seven courage which is a lot but at a cost of way too many of his other stats so i think um i definitely prefer this option instead 
It's worth noting that you also get these events for your other children, uh, maybe to a lesser extent, because your heir obviously takes higher priority. Uh, but in this case, our bastards, uh, this the, the child we, we got from our uh, affair, basically. Um, we can specialize her, in her as well, similar to what we did with our heir. Now, I think it's, it's actually thematically interesting to kind of send our bastard out into the world and just do her own thing. Um, and that will give us some maybe unique events as well. So this is just kind of the random option, but it's yeah, it's it's quite fun to do. And we once again get to pick some more research. So in this case, I'm actually going to go against the uh, advice from the game to go for the military drill. Barracks are very nice to have, and they do give your idle melee units experience, which is a very good way to train them. And training should not be underestimated in this game. However, uh, we are currently working towards getting cities connected and developing and things like that. So, um, arist uh, arist aristocracy, I'm not sure why I can't pronounce that, is pretty decent. Uh, although the laws that you get from it are not particularly strong, but you do get the ability to, to uh, have another member of your court. Namely the ambassador. But I do think a labor force is really useful. We have a lot of workers at the moment. So being able to um, build roads and connect our cities together is going to be extremely useful. And I also think that, um, well, to be honest, slavery is not necessarily a good thing. Because you do get a lot of additional unrest from that. But your mines and quarries will become really strong. So if you're going for, uh, for example, world wonders, this is a pretty good option. But freedom is basically free money. Um... Although, of course, you do need to spend the 400 civics to pass the law. But I think this is a pretty good option. So let's go for this next. And now we have so much civics production. I also think it's a good moment to start passing a law. Now, what laws will do is, of course, give you a bonus. We have monotheism uh, or polytheism available to us. This will actually allow us to build shrines everywhere, uh, which is really useful by itself uh, because these shrines are really powerful. And it will allow us to make sure we get a lot of culture going. Alternatively, we can go for this, and this will allow us to get the state religion cities to give us one order per year. Right now, all our four cities actually have this, have the state religion in it. Um, so this will be a flat four orders per year, which is a lot. Um, but I also really like the shrines. So yeah, there is that. Mm, 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 mm. I think we're actually going to go for the um, for the shrines over here. So let's go. Let's spend that. And now we have a law pass. This will actually require an upkeep, so it's not free. Um, we are able to build garrisons near our cities as well, and that will allow us to put governors in each of our cities as well. So this is kind of the stacking up. Just because we have one law passed, that will allow us to build garrisons, and that will allow us to build governors. So really get our economy going at an even higher rate. And there we go, we completed an ambition. We now have six mines, and that will give us a nice boost to our legitimacy. We are now at 94, which is well, pretty good. Um, and that means we are cleared one out of 10 ambitions. And of course, if we complete all 10, we will actually win the game. So we're, <laughs> we're nowhere near done, uh, but at least we're taking some steps along the way. Uh, well, Houston, we have a problem. Apparently, our prince is now missing because he went after his lover. So there was an earlier event uh, where they were basically trying to um, cuddle up to each other. And we were like, no, don't do that. And we were going to tell on our mommy and things like that, which is the leader of Carthage. Uh, but apparently, they don't care. So they are now in love and he ran off with her, I suppose. So we can either tell them the truth, our people it is. And actually gain some from that and considering we are now getting to a uh, pretty high level of discipline we are going to get gain a lot from that or we can choose a new heir secretly and get some um, civics from that we already have quite a lot of civics production going so i think we'll just go for this now the real problem with this is that we will no longer have an heir so we're going to need to fix that or hope he somehow turns back up because he's not dead he's not gone he is just missing and this might turn into a future event, it might not, we don't know, uh, but we'll have to deal with it one way or another. And there's still so much stuff happening that I think this is a good moment to end this episode. So we'll deal with actually replacing our heir, probably, in the next uh, next episode. Uh, expanding our cities, finally. I mean, we cleared out most of the, uh, the units now, uh, the barbarians are... 
Let me see, the barbarians are starting to go down as well. We are moving our military in that direction. We have taken control of this. You you do need to occupy these sites, by the way, because if you don't, these cities will regrow. So the tribes will be coming back. You need to do it all over again. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't go very fast. I think it's like something like five or eight turns or something like that. So it's, it's not going to pop up instantly. Uh, but you do need to make sure you stay in control. Uh, once this chariot is done, we can move out and pretty much clean everything out here as well. Which means we should probably start making some settlers over here. Uh, it's only going to take five years, so that's really convenient. And yeah, that means we should be able to complete these six connected cities in the next episode. And start working towards the shrines and stuff like that as well. We are actually building a second shrine here already. This is the shrine that will boost the camp that's going to be next to it. And because we now have the laws enacted, we should be able to really take our cities to the next level. And I know I've been saying that probably for two episodes now, uh, but I do want to make sure um, you can, you are able to follow along with a lot of these pop-ups, these, these events that happen, because they can really steer your gameplay into a certain direction. And if you have been commenting on the previous episodes, uh, I do record these a little bit in advance. If you have been giving me suggestions, you might not have seen me pick up on those instantly. But again, that's because I do record these in advance. I do read all the comments, so please keep leaving them. It's really interesting to see if you guys have any experience with this game, how you would have done things differently, or if you agree with what I've been doing. That's always good to hear as well. Um, but yeah, don't be too uh, unhappy if you don't see me immediately picking up on your suggestions in the next episode, because that's just how I record these things. But Still, backseat gaming is very much allowed in my comments thread, so let me know what you think I should have done different or well, whatever suggestions or questions you might have. If you're still here, you are awesome and I hope to catch you in the next one.